Hello there, welcome back to cost and management accounting in five. Uh, still working on question paper of November 2019. Uh, today we want to look uh, at, uh, at question five uh, of that question paper. And uh, question five is all about uh, calculating in vendor using the first in, first out uh, method. So uh, we've got a question that we have there. This is the question that we have uh, according to this question paper, which is question five, uh, and it reads, a toys manufacturers uses a continuous stock system. The following transactions occurred during April 2017. Then we are given there a table where we the column for debt, uh, units manufactured, then units issued. So um, uh, this is what we have. Then believe that we are given, we are having the required part, which says calculate the value of stock as of 3rd April 2017. Uh, using the first in first out method of valuation. So basically, this is an, an abbreviation. Uh, this is the P4 method, uh, F I F O, which is the P4 method. That is a. Uh, uh, it explains that uh, the first stock that is bought is the first uh, stock that should be issued uh, for production. Uh, so this is what we have. So uh, uh, we are going to uh, have a table, uh, a table that we are going to co construct, uh, which you, uh, is already pre-constructed. Uh, that we are going to enter some figures. So if you go here on the answer section, uh, you would see that uh, we have got a table that we have there of stock ledger card of toys manufacturers. And this is the table that we are having. And we have got, we have got a column for date, uh, receipts, uh, issues, and balance. So for every uh, uh, for every column uh, we are having, every column of receipts, issues, and balance, we are having also uh, some sub-columns that are inside for units, price, total, uh, the same applies to, to, to issues and balance. So this is what we have. Then on the date part, we are just going to uh, describe the date that we are having there. And then we uh, uh, put the details in terms of uh, if there were receipts, if there were issues, then we are create the balance on the last part. So uh, this is what we have. So uh, if you go to the question uh, to try to check what we have in the question, you'll see that uh, on 1 April, we have got opening stock that we have there for 2,200. So uh, we are just going to indicate that on 1 April, uh, we are going to just going to enter on the balance section uh, to indicate that this this was the stock that we uh, started with. So uh, we go there and enter with 2,200 uh, that we have uh, for our opening uh, for our opening uh, stock. So you see that for the opening uh, opening balance of opening stock on uh, 1 April, we are given only units that were issued. We are not uh, uh, given uh, the the um, the number of units. We are not given the uh, value per unit. So these are, these figures are pre-ended. So if you come here on our answer section, uh, we have got uh, on an April we've got uh, two thousand two hundred uh, that we have for units. Then the price per unit is sixteen. Then if you, if you multiply it two thousand two hundred times sixteen, you are going to get a value of thirty five thousand two hundred. So this is what we have uh, in terms of uh, on one April. Then I will go and check uh, on the next date. Uh, what do we have? On the next date, now on 3 April, uh, we have uh, uh, units uh, manufactured, which is uh, 400. So it means these are, are going to go under receipts. So this section, uh, this section is for uh, receipts. That is this column uh, is for receipts. And then uh, this one is for issues. Uh, this one is for issues. So we can work it out as that. So uh, this is what we have uh, uh, there. Then, uh, so on 3 April, we've got some receipts of 400, uh, 400 units at eight, eight rands each. So we're just going to enter this, uh, what we have the year, and then we calculate the value now, 400 times eight. So what we are saying is uh, the next date is 3 April. Uh, 3 April is going to be our next date, and we've got a receipt on the number of units. We've got 400 uh, there, uh, 400. And then on the price per unit, remember there's eight. So if you multiply 400 times eight, you're going to get 3,200. So uh, this is uh, what we have in terms of the receipt part. And then uh, whenever we receive, uh, we are going to indicate the uh, units that we received uh, on that date. And then you also indicate the units that were there uh, for balance for the previous uh, date. So for for here, for instance, the pre previous date, we have got uh, 2,200 and then uh, uh, 16 for price per unit in the So we're going to indicate the, the, them here if, if we are receiving. So here we can just close here. We can just close here. And here we are now on 3 April. And now we are saying uh, 
uh, uh, we are having 2,200 was there. So we, we, we include it again here if, the, if we are having receipts and then uh, per unit we are having 16 and then we repeat here 35, uh, 35, 200. So uh, this is what we have. And then uh, we then include the ones, the new ones that we have uh, received here, which means now we have 400 uh, having eight uh, per unit and uh, the total being 3,200. So it means uh, on 3 April, uh, the value of the stock that is available there 3 April is 3,200 plus 3,200. So this is what we have. Then we can close here uh, and go to the next date. So if we go to the next date, uh, you'd see that uh, on the next date now, what we are we are doing, uh, we are now going to the next date. Let's check what we have on the next date uh, there. On the next date now, it's 9 April. We are seeing on 9 April now there are issues now, 1,200. So whenever we're issuing, that's where we are applying this concept of first in, first out. We are saying this 1,200, we are going to take them from the units that first arrived, uh, uh, that first were there in the in the stock, and we, we, we remove the, the old ones, and we, are, we remain with the, uh, uh, the new ones. So this is what we have. So what we are going to do is, uh, remember, we started with 2,200, so we are going to remove uh, what does the 200 from 2200? Because these were the first to, to arrive before uh, the ones that arrived on 3 April there. So this is what we have. So we go to the uh, the card that we have there. We are going to say, uh, we are going to say, uh, let's just say, I'll put the details in terms of the date. Uh, the date we have 9 April. The date we have 9 April there. And we are saying uh, uh, we are issuing 1200. So we have uh, 1,200, uh, the issue part is here. So we have 1,200 that has been issued. And uh, the, the cost per unit, so price per unit is 16. And then if you multiply 1,200 times 16, you get the value here. The total, you get uh, 19,200. 19, then now, on the balance, now what we are doing now, we are saying these ones, 1,200, we remove them from the 2,200 that we that first were there. So, uh, what you're going to say, do you are going to say 2,200 minus 1,200? Then obviously, you're going to remain with 1,000 here. And we know that uh, this, this 1,000 uh, out of the 2,200, we have got, we have got only 1,000 uh, units that are remaining. And the, co the, the price per unit that we have is 16. So here, we're going to put 16. Then we say 1,000 times 16, uh, you are going to get 16,000. So uh, this is uh, 16,000 here in terms of the balance now. Then uh, these ones uh, are still there. Uh, the total is still there, so we are just going to put 400 uh, and, and 8. And obviously, uh, we have our, our total being 3,200. So this is what we have on 9 April. And then uh, we can go on to see what we have next now on the next date. So if you go to the next date now, uh, we are going to 12 April. So on 12 April, uh, we are having some units that we have manufactured, which means we are having some receipts there on 12 April of 300 units at 13 rand each. So these are just additions to what we had. So uh, we are just going to uh, add them to what we, we are having uh, on the last date. So 300 units, it's 13 rand each. You can go back there and just uh, put those figures. That is 12 April. So we are now here, 12 April. Uh, these are receipts here. We are going to put them here. So we are saying 300. And we are saying uh, price per unit, we are having 13. And then uh, total now we are saying 300 times 18, you get 3,900. So uh, this is what we have. Then on the balance section, uh, remember on the last date we had these ones in stock and we, these ones are addition. So we are going to include these ones and we add uh, the, the ones that we have, uh, just uh, received here. So we are just, we are, what we are saying now, we are saying we are going to say 1,000, 1,000, uh, it's 16 per unit, uh, total 16,000. And then uh, we also have 400 at eight per units, total 3,200. So this is what we have. And then the, these are the additions. Uh, we also have 300 at 18 per unit, uh, total 3,900. So this is what we have. Then we can close here, go to the next date. Uh, let's try to check what we have in terms of the next date now. All right, on the next date, um, let's go back to check what we have on the next date from 12 April, we are going to 15 April. 15 April, we are having 990 that were issued. So uh, this 990, uh, let's try go and see how we are going to deduct those ones. Uh, we are on 15 April. 
15 April, and we are saying uh, we have some issues uh, there of 990. So we are here, we are saying 990, and we are saying that per unit uh, that we have there is 16. So you multiply 16 times 990, you get 15,000. Uh, 840 and then when we do that uh, uh, this is what we have so uh, what these are issues remember and we are going to issue them uh, according to to to, to uh, how we received them so this is the uh, order in which we received them so these ones were the first to be received 1000 then followed by 400 followed by 300 so for, for out of this 1090 we're going to take uh, uh, these 990 we are going to take them from 1,000. They are enough to take them from 1,000. So we are saying, say 1,000 minus 990, obviously we get a 10 there. So it means here uh, we have a balance of 10 on these units of uh, uh, of 16 uh, balance per unit here. So we are left with, uh, here we are left with uh, 10 at 16, which means the total is 10 times 16, we get 160. And these ones, we didn't take anything, so we are going to uh, just uh, rewrite them as they are. We have 400 at 8, and 3,200. So this is what we have. And then also we have got 300. Uh, here we've got 18. And we multiply the two, we get 10,900. So this is uh, what happens or what transpired on 15 April. Uh, so uh, we go to the next date and see what we are supposed to do there. So uh, from 15 April now, we go back to the question to see what we have after 15 April. So after 15 April, we have got uh, 19 April. And on 19 April, we have got some returns to the supply. So this Basically, these are purchase returns, uh, returns out that are going out. So uh, what, what they are going to do is they're going to deduct, deduct uh, the section of the receipts because uh, we are just returning what we received. So uh, what how many units did we re are we going to retain? We have got 150 units that we have here. Uh, and uh, they are being specifically uh, being highlighted that uh, these were the units that were received on 12th April. So we go to 12th April, we see that uh, we are going to re remove these 150 units from these 300. And we, are, we remain with 150. Say 300 minus 150, you get 150. So it means you are going to remain with 150 after deducting the returns. So uh, this is that exactly what we are going to do. We come here. This is 19 April. Uh, we are saying 19. Uh, 19 April. And we are, we are going to uh, put them in the section of receipts, but we put them as negatives uh, since they are reducing the receipts. So here we are saying uh, 150 units were retained uh, in brackets, and uh, they were. Uh, uh, the units of 12th April, which is 13 uh, runs per unit. So we, we put that again, 13 runs per unit. And uh, the total of that we have there, 150 times 13, we are going to get 1,950. So this is the reduction that we have. So on this section now of the balance, we are saying the 10 are still there. So we are going to rewrite them, 10, 16, uh, 160, uh, 160. And then uh, uh, the 400 are still there. 408 and 3200. Then, at the ones that have been reduced, at these ones for 300, we are saying 300 minus 150, you get 150. 150 times, uh, we have got 13 per unit on those units. Uh, 150 times 13 now, uh, we are saying 1950, you get 1950 here. So, this is what we have uh, in terms of this valuation. Now, we go to the next date uh, and see what we have. Um, from 19 April, we are going to 25 April. 25 April, uh, we have got issues, uh, issued 450. So we are just going to use the same criteria that we are using. Uh, we, we issued 450, so we are going to take 10. Uh, and then uh, if, we, if we say 450 uh, minus 10, we are left with 440. So for, we still have to deduct 440. We take 400, this one's 400. Now, uh, remember, after deducting 10, we are left with 440. So uh, when we say 440 minus 400, uh, you get 40. So it means it's still we do have to deduct 40. So uh, we say 150 minus um, 150 minus um, minus 40, we are going to get 110. So it means uh, on the balance section, uh, on the balance section, we are only going to remain with 10. We are only going to remain with 10 of 18 we are only going to remain with uh uh sorry uh we are going we are only going to remain there let's try to see sorry uh we, we when we are calculating here we are saying uh we have got four people that we need to deduct so we say uh 
450 minus 10, you are left with 440. Then you say 440 minus uh, 400, you are left with 40. Then we say 150 minus uh, uh, 40, you are left with 110. It's 110 here. Uh, and uh, obviously, uh, the, the, the price per unit that we are having, uh, is, uh, the remaining ones are in 150, so it's 13. So here you're having 13. So you multiply the 200 uh, times 13, uh, 100 times 13, you get uh, 1,430. 1, 1, uh, 1430. So this is what we have on the balance section. Then we can enter the in terms of the details. Uh, this was 25 April. Uh, this was uh, 20, uh, 25 April. And uh, on 25 April, uh, this were, uh, let's try to see, these were issues. Remember, uh, these were issues. So how did we issue them? We took 10, uh, 10 of 16 per unit uh, value, 160. So here we are saying on issues, we have 10. Um, 16, which is 160, and we also, we also took uh, 400 of 8 per unit, so we're saying 400, uh, 8 year, 3,200, and we took 10, uh, so we took 40 from year, so we've got 40 year at 18 per unit, and then we say 40 times 18, uh, we get um, 520, so here we've got 520. So this is what uh, transpired on 25 April. So on the last part now, uh, which is date April, let's try to see what transpired. Then here we can close. And let's try to see what transpired on 30 April. On 31 April. On uh, 31 April, we've got 850. These are receipts. It's uh, 1550 per unit. So we go back there now and enter those ones as it is. Uh, we've got 850 that we are having there. Uh, so here we are saying uh, this is now 31 April. And uh, we are saying these are receipts, so uh, we are putting them in the, in the first uh, uh, column of our receipts. Uh, that is uh, uh, units that we received. We've got 850, and then uh, these were 1550 per unit. And the total that we are having there is 18,175. So uh, this is what we have. And then um, on the balance section, now we are summarizing what is left now. Remember, we've got this 110, uh, 110, at 13, we just rewrite them as they are, 1,430. So this is uh, what we have. We can just extend this, this is the last one. Uh, so uh, uh, we are saying 1,430. And then uh, we have the new ones that we have just received. These ones, which we are saying is uh, 850 uh, at 1550 per unit. And the value now, if you multiply the two, we got this figure, which is 18,175. So here we are saying 18,175. So this is what we have. So uh, finally, now the idea behind this uh, this statement is to calculate the uh, the value of the finished uh, 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 the finished stock or the value of the stock that we have there uh, at the end of the period. So to calculate out the value, uh, the, the, the section that is now important at this point is this one, uh, the section that we are having there at the end, whereby we are having uh, 1,430, and then we have 13,175. So we just add in the two so that we get the, uh, so that we get the total. So we are saying 14,000, uh, we are saying uh, 1, 1,430, then we add this one, we are adding these two figures, 18,175. Then you get the, uh, the value of the uh, of the stock that we have using the first in first out method. So this was 14,605. So this is the total that is going to come here, 14,605. And then uh, also we need to know the total number of units that we have in the in the stock. Uh, so this is going to also indicate the total number of units that we have in the stock. We are going to say 110 plus 850. And what do we get there? Uh, we are going to get 960. So here, it means here we've got 960. So this is what we have, guys, uh, in terms of the valuation of stock using the first in, first out method uh, on the continuous uh, basis. So this is what we have. Uh, hopefully, this video was helpful. We'll meet again in the next video. Let's stay tuned for more videos. Those who haven't subscribed, please subscribe and share. We are still coming. Stay tuned. This was this video. I'm signing out.